Hello, I'm Sami Aryan. I'm a tech philosopher, author, filmmaker, and the founder of Impeak. My guest on today's podcast is Justin Rezvani. I first heard him on What Bitcoin Did by Peter McCormick. Justin is building a decentralized, open-sourced, utility-based social media protocol that is built on top of Bitcoin. Like many other Bitcoiners, Justin is not as interested in NFTs or Ethereum in general. So we had a good conversation and even a little bit of a debate, which is always fun. Justin, so just so you know, uh, the way that I choose my guests, it's um, it's quite eclectic. Uh, you know, like most people have got a stream of, uh, you know, thoughts and, and like a, a specific kind of niche and they go and, and find guests that are related to their niche. Uh, of course, I'm building a platform which is a Web3 education and everything to do with like the metaverse and this new space that we're going into. And um, I call myself a tech philosopher. So I studied political philosophy and transatlantic studies and then applied what I learned to, uh, to technology, uh, written a book about the future of work and, and all that stuff. So, so I'm always very interested in where technology is going and I'm kind of building this platform which is very much focused on on where this this space is going so i listen to a lot of different podcasts um that uh have got interesting guests and sometimes the people who are on these podcasts really disagree with the direction of what i'm building or, or what i'm doing so for example i recently had jimmy song uh on my podcast uh that was a very painful interview, <laughs> you know, because he's like Web3, the whole thing, this whole space is, is a scam. And this is all basically you are all you guys are all immoral and all that stuff. But I, I keep an open mind. So uh, the reason why I wanted to talk to you, I discovered you on uh, Peter McCormick's um, podcast, What Bitcoin Did. And I was really interested in what you're building. Um, you know, I wanted to find out where you are with the journey with regards to Zion. And of course, also your personal journey was super interesting as well. I remember I was listening to that podcast when I was in Dubai. I actually afterwards, I sent a message to Peter and I was like, I hope you take that um, bet seriously and, and actually go and, um, you know, do the health challenge as well. Um, so do you want to tell me a little bit about your background or tell our audience a little bit about your background? So. It's my understanding that you first built a, a successful business, you sold it, everything was uh, great, and then you took a, uh, a physical challenge. You did this Ironman um, physical challenge, uh, and you were at the peak of your, uh, your health. And at that point, you had this, um, what was the brain surgery thing? Was it, was, it some, was it like something that happened as a result of the pressure that you put on your body? So tell us a little bit about your, your backstory and then we will, we will take it from there. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Um, well, I started my career right out of college, uh, built one of the world's first influencer marketing businesses. Uh, so we were the first app on the app store that put a brand and an influencer together through a mobile app. Um, being early was good in that case, in the sense of we were the first that basically drove ads on Instagram. And in 2016, had the ability to sell the business. So I sold the company in 2016. I stayed on the board until 2018 and then kind of left my role full time as CEO and left the board in 2018 to focus on my health. I, I was 240 pounds running my company, so quite a big boy. Uh, I was just eating and drinking and doing all the things that the standard American diet um, perceives as correct. Um, so I was, a, I was a bit of a fatty. Uh, that's why I make fun of fat people now because it's all their fault. There's, there's no other reason for you to be fat other than the fact that you eat too much food. I was fat and then I changed. So don't be fat. Anyway, I wanted to really figure out how to manage my health. So went all in on that and decided to figure out the hardest foot race I could do, um, which was an Ironman. Um, I would say Ironman is almost a mental race as much as it is a physical race. So it's something that you really want to understand your own mind because mile 18 of the marathon isn't just the fact that your feet stop working, is that your mind has to tell you to keep going and keep going and keep going. And 
you know, the weird thing is after an Ironman and I had this like weird inclination that I think I could do it all over again in that same time. So I, I, um, it was great. And then late November, I had a seizure, uh, sitting in a dentist chair, went to the ER, they found a, a series of blood vessels in my, in my brain had collected and then created a bleed, which created a seizure. It was a cavernoma. It's a malignant tumor, I guess what they call it. Um, and then in January, 2020, I had brain surgery to remove it out of my right temporal lobe. And then that's how I got kind of dove into Bitcoin. I, uh, and Peter's podcast is good because it's an hour of what happened. He's, he was more enamored by the story than, than the fact that I run a, quite a big Bitcoin company. So that was a, if you want to know what happened, that's a better podcast to listen to because it's very, yeah, detailed. exactly. I think, it, I think I will put the, I will put the link to Peter's link podcast the, because, because like when I was listening to that episode, I, I was like, okay, at what point are we going to get to the meat of the actual thing? That that's is what we wanted to talk about. That, look, I, it's his podcast. I, yeah. I'm just, I, I was just listening like, Hey, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about that? Oh, yeah, it? no, no, I was, it was really, actually, it was super interesting. And I was like, really into it. Um, and, and I was like, really getting very inspired and, and all that stuff. But I was like, at what point are we actually going to get to talk about Bitcoin? I think about an hour in, we got into yeah. start talking about Bitcoin and censorship and, and the problems with censorship. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so look, um, you know, you are half Persian, I'm fully Persian. So censorship is something that I know very well. You know, I grew up in Iran, actually, it's, uh, you know, everything was censored. For me, um, blockchain technology is super interesting because of it being permissionless and, and all that stuff. So now you are building, we will jump back and forth a little bit. But right now, so you're building a social media platform, am I right? And is it, um, a, or a place for content creators and it's built on Bitcoin? Yeah, so we're building a censorship resistant social network built on Bitcoin's lightning network. Um, and we're, we're working on specific technical patterns that involve DIDs, decentralized web nodes, IPFS for data storage, and then lightning for payments. So that's how we're building our technical stack. Some people, um, Jack from Block released this as like the Web Five stack. Uh, so we'll be one of the first companies um, building on that on that specific stack because there's some things that I think are inherently broken on the web that we want to solve for. Again, identity is the first pay piece. Is most people don't own their identity online. They use Google or they use uh, another downstream login in which they own their identity. Um, they definitely don't own where the relationships happen with their fans. So, for example. The database entry of your followers on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, that is the ownership of Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So you actually don't own your audience. You don't own your identity. You don't own the content that you post on these services. And so we are attempting to build that service. Um, but what's really important about how we're building it is um, we're not building it on another blockchain. We're not building our own token. Um, we don't believe that those are necessary features um, to build a feature rich system. And I think that's the inherent difference. Um, I, I do uh, prescribe to the fact that I think we've over blockchained things. Uh, data for a social network should not be stored on a blockchain. Anyone that tells you that is a, I will say that right now. Um, anyone that need, says, oh, you need a token to incentivize a community is also a. Uh, so, all these things are not required in order to build a new network state. And I say that greatly with pride because I think what's happening in the systems is we've enamored ourselves thinking that blockchain is the answer when in fact blockchains are highly inefficient. They're terrible database machines. They're expensive. I mean, a hundred times more expensive and inefficient than traditional database systems. Um, so I think there's an emergence of new technical patterns that we can follow um, that does not require a blockchain or a token and that's why zion is being built on bitcoin very nice so um since uh, when i heard that interview that was i think it was april or something so how how far have you come uh over the past few months we 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 launched this company in august of last year and we built we sent an alpha product out to the world um that product was used by over three thousand creators we processed over one hundred twenty thousand transactions um, we grew the business quite pretty big up until about April. Um, and then in May, we started building the version two of the application. And um, in, in October, 
we will have uh, version two launched. And what you'll see with version two is a completely UI UX. Um, it will be a completely new technical infrastructure underneath um, the application that allow us to scale this to millions uh, very quickly. So we're quite excited about where we're going with this app. We're, we're very excited. Very, okay, very cool. So look, for example, I'm a content creator and I'm building a community. So we actually have got an NFT drop coming up. Uh, so we, we are building a token gated NFT community. I want to know, you mentioned about that you don't need a token, but what, what if you wanted to build an NFT, uh, like a token gated community? Um, how would how would that work in, in the world of, you know, Zion and, and um, a Bitcoin based social network would that be possible no because i don't know the reason that you need a token to gate a community i i think that um in in the world that we talk about we use the ids and and the pattern that we can implement is a verifiable credential that can be assigned by a specific community owner um so the idea that we need another blockchain to assign a token that requires you to use their currency to go buy that NFT. And like all of these things are to me, number one, terribly inefficient and not required. What you, what most people want mm -hmm. is they want the ability to access a community and have some ownership with that community in some way. So I don't think an NFT is needed um, to be able but to the build the NFT a, a in community. this case is the membership token. So it's like you buy that and you have three years membership of that community. Okay. Is there another way to do that? Well, there, there are many ways to do many things, right? Like currently we have the web two version of it, which is you buy an annual membership and, uh, you know, then you become a member. Um, but because, um, of the kind of targeting group that we have, those people tend to be more comfortable with buying an NFT as a membership as opposed to just um, buying a a general membership it's just so where the, uh, where where the current you know attention of the market is i mean maybe i i don't know that we're at a place where someone is more uh, like as, as society we're more comfortable with buying an nft than we are using our not as society the are. target audience of where like my current target audience yeah maybe uh, maybe i mean it's it i don't Look, I'm not an NFT person. I don't even own an NFT. Um, I don't know anything about NFT. So I'm probably not a person to comment on the difference, but we don't think that it's necessary. And in Zion, we're not trying to create another process in which you have to follow another blockchain. Because I think the problem with most of these blockchains is the fact that they say like, okay, if you want to use our smart contract, whatever that means, they're not that smart, in fact, um, you have to use our token uh, you have to buy our token. You have to use our fuel. You have to use our gas. You have to do all these things. I, I don't understand that. I don't know. I don't know why that's that's necessary exactly um, to build these systems. Um, which is, you know, we're we're trying to stay away from these these general conversations because I think there is an inherent difference between Bitcoin and everything else. Um, and I don't want to get into the the complexity of these other systems. Okay. Yeah, I understand. So. Um, you said that there is like ownership as well in that uh, in in this ecosystem that you're creating. How does ownership work? Like, let's say so, for example, you are a content creator, and I want to be part of your community. How can I have? Because with the NFT, I can have ownership of um, a, a small part of that community, and then whenever I decide that I don't want to be part of it anymore, I can just sell that NFT. So how would, how does that work in your system? Sure. Um, well, number one is essentially the, I think what's more important is the connections between creators and fans. Um, I think that's ultimately the most important relationship. I think we're trying to continuously bifurcate things with an NFT and say, oh, now you have ownership. Well, well, how does that actually work? Probably when you go down to the nuts and bolts, you don't own anything. It's just an idea that you own something. So ultimately for a creator, it's about the relationship between their fan. If we establish that DIDs, right, decentralized identifiers become the standard um, identifier address for a particular creator, um, now you can build a system where I, my DID and your DID create a relationship through a decentralized web node. And we now have a hooked connection through this open source, open state system. 
And now anytime I want to access content from that creator, I can just go to that DID and I know that that influencer's DID is where their content streams through. So I know this is their identifier and I can access their content. That's the way our system allows for ownership because you own the DID through a private key. We as a company have no access to that private key. We don't know how to, we, we just know how to build the connections to these with, with the system, but we don't own the actual identity you do as the creator. And then the fan owns their own identity. And then the set the centralized web node is what makes those two access points talk to each other. Again, that's open source and open state. So that's what we're talking about when you have ownership is that it's not that you own some object on some blockchain is that you actually own the connection and your identifier within that relationship. So that's where we see things are going. Um, again, these wallets don't really provide an identity layer. They're just where you store file objects with a private key. So I think the there might be a world where wallets get added to your DID, but the base layer to us is a DID. Okay. So you see the, the interesting thing about the, the place that I'm in is that I get to speak to both sides or to many sides, you know, I get to speak to people who completely, uh, deny the value of, um, blockchain altogether. Then I get to speak to people who have the same perspective about say Ethereum and, and NFTs because they have an incentive. Yeah. So everybody has got, you know, and you've got your own incentive, right? So, so everybody has got, so, but I, I, as somebody who talks to it, but, but, but I will clarify my incentive is not to drive you to buy a token and think that my token is going to be the way that I Ponzi you out of money. Like, so that that's very like to be very specific. And I, and I want to make sure that that's clear to your audiences. I don't fall under the narratives of all of these other people. I'm providing an open service that creates, I'm not printing my own money. I'm using Bitcoin. I can't make up Bitcoin. I can't make more of them. I'm building on an open source technical pattern. I'm not saying that you have to use my blockchain or my specific thing. You can use your own and host your own. So I think there is an inherent difference between what I am doing and what most people are doing, because it would be very easy for me to say, oh, here's the new Zion token and you got to buy it, but then you have ownership. I'd make a ton of money quickly. But I'm not doing it because I don't think it's right. I don't think it's the right way to do things. Um, so I just want to clarify that. I think it's okay, really important no, no, that's, that that's good build that distinction. Yes. Okay. Cool. No, but but that's not where I was going. What I was trying to think about, uh, to say here was that there are people from lots of different camps, and as a tech philosopher, I'm in a position where I talk to all, everybody, and then I I can zoom out, and I can see where trends are de developing actually and one of the things i'm seeing here is that let's say for example uh, around the world right now roughly around 300 million people own any kind of crypto and we know that about 2 million people uh, out of those have got some sort of nfts you know they've 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 bought nfts they've received nfts they've got wallets with nfts in them so it's a relatively small number in comparison to, you know, the big population. Um, but when I when I think about what you're building, uh, to my knowledge, I wonder whether we are going to be in a position where we've got all of these different types of networks built on different kinds of blockchains, whether it's on Bitcoin, whether, whether it's on Ethereum with NFTs, um, you know, or it's the type of thing that you are building and it will attract different kinds of content creators. So, for example, when I look at somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, people like, say, Kevin Rose, you know, like they're building on Ethereum, they're using these NFTs to, to you know, and tokens to build um, a connection with their audience. Um, the type of people that I can see potentially being more attracted to what you're building in my mind is probably people like Michael Malice, you know, like, um, maybe even Joe Rogan, you know, like, like there, are, there's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I may be wrong about Joe Rogan, but, but for example, Michael Malice, you know, these are, these are the type of people who are like more like Bitcoin, you know, purer kind of forms of, 
I would say if you think of in the in the spectrum of blockchains, you know, Bitcoin is like the more purer one. And then you as you go into Ethereum and then you go down down the chain, you know, with with different tokens, it becomes more and more diluted. Right. So when I look at where the attention is, it seems to me that most of the people that have a chance to bring this um, you know, blockchain technology and, and this new way of ownership or con content uh, creation or a relationship between content creator and people, most of the attention seems to be right now in the Ethereum ecosystem and NFTs. So I would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, your, your uh, observation as somebody who is building a social network on top of Bitcoin's Lightning Network, what what are your thoughts on that uh, with regards to that? Um, I I think Bitcoin has a marketing problem, um, and I would say that I think that the the sometimes the way that we I guess the not we but the the maximalist approach the way they talk about things is a bit adversarial. And it's kind of standoffish to some people, and it is what it is. They have an agenda as well. Look, uh, I said so exactly, I, I think, and sorry to interrupt you. I I said exactly that to Jimmy Song, and he was like, "I don't care," <laughs> you know. I was like, "Like I was like, Jimmy's, you you like you don't have to be so." Jimmy's great. I yeah, he's Jimmy. great. Jimmy's, Jimmy's a great person. I I think yeah. he's, he's like one of the nicest human beings that I've ever met, and I get to engage with. So I, I I do like Jimmy a lot, and I and I and I understand where he comes from. My general thesis is I, I'm trying to simplify the human experience. And I think everyone else is trying to complicate it. So let me give you an example. If I go to the store, if I go to Whole Foods and I want to buy three things, I want to buy milk, eggs, and bread. Right now, the way that this whole industry is, is forming is that if I want to go buy bread, I need to go buy a bread token. If I want to go buy eggs, I need to go have an egg token. And if I want to have milk, I got to go buy a milk token. And I have to have all these tokens in this wallet. And then I got to go do all these things. My belief is that the human mind is already dealing with tremendous amount of complexity. And it does not need a, an additional layer of complexity. When I want to go do something, I need to now have this wallet and this currency and this blah, 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 blah. Right. I, I think that that's a complicated thing for a human to, to manage. And um, I would I would also push back as, I don't think that many people actually use this stuff. Uh, my number is closer to 10,000 people. Um, I don't think it's 2 million. I think that's a very generous number to give. I think it's much less. Well, people uh, there is actually there is, there's like uh, the uh, you can see that from OpenSea's, um, you know, sure. statistics of, of people who have some kind of NFTs in their I don't think that that data is deduplicated. I think that there's many people that have hundreds of wallets with hundreds of things. So, so I, I would look at the deduplicated data. Um, so, just putting that out there. I think the number is okay, much yeah, smaller. Yeah, no, that, that's I think, fair. I think, it's significant. I think it's much smaller. I'm, I'm just playing uh, advocate on the other side. I, I try to simplify things. And then the the second piece, because I believe that there's a simplification that's required. I do think that Bitcoin has the opportunity to become the monetary layer of the internet, um, mostly because of the adoption that's occurring across um, the um, institutional organizations. So my thesis is that in order to simplify things, um, build something on Bitcoin. Um, if people want to pay for things, they can pay through the Lightning Network, digital content for digital currency. And that's where I see things are going, in, in my general opinion. I think it all in some ways will come back to being denominated in Bitcoin ultimately um, in the end. Um, so that's my thesis on it. I, I, I don't see this multi-token, multi-wallet world. I think it's more complex for a regular human. And I would actually argue we have the largest market share um, available to users because we're not requiring anything complex. Like when you join Zion in the new version, you simply say, create a DID, you get a private key, you now have an account. If you want to fund the account, you could use dozens of wallets that you can fund the account from. Cash App has 70 million users, Moon, River, all these other services that, that you can buy Bitcoin and put it into your wallet. Um, and then you get off to the races. Like I'd argue that we actually have the largest community because Bitcoin is the largest cr cryptocurrency. It has the largest market share in terms of cryptocurrency. More people own Bitcoin than any other digital asset. So I'd argue that we actually have the largest market share 
um, in the, that's why we built it on Bitcoin. It wasn't just a, a oh, let's try this thing. Um, so those are my arguments to why we decided to build in this way. And I, I'm not denying the fact that Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, Solana, all these things are building a bit of momentum, but that's because it's it's built that way. They have, they're a company. We have to remember that there's companies behind these cryptocurrencies. These, are, these aren't just these ethereal things that are built that aren't controlled by anyone, which is different than Bitcoin. That's why it's inherently different. They have marketing teams. They have PR teams. They have people that put them on CNBC. They have billions of dollars in assets. They're, they are, um, Sam Bankman-Fried talks about, like he's in Washington, D.C. more than he is in the Bahamas because he's, he's, he's funding the way things will work in the U.S. government. And so that's where I see why they're doing a little bit better. Um, Bitcoin is a marketing problem, just does, right? I, they're, I they're, and, 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 and my on. goal, and my my goal is to build a mainstream application that people around the world can use very simply. And and I'm not, I I wouldn't call I'm not part of this you know this cult in some ways. Like I'm kind of doing my own thing. I believe what I believe, but I'm more practical. I'm a practicalist. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to build something normal for everyone to use because I, I do believe freedom is needed in the world. Yeah, no, I, um, I completely agree with you with regards to Bitcoin having a marketing problem. Look, um, I think as, as somebody who is a builder out there, um, even if you disagree with it, I recommend that you just buy some NFTs and go into some NFT communities, right? Just just experience it. Because when you experience it, there is something about it that's sticky. There's something about it that's sticky, which is much more interesting and exciting than um, simply just pay with your there, there, say, there's pay no, with look, Bitcoin there, yeah, and, and get but, but but yeah, but but I don't think you understand the experience that we're going to create. And look, there's no doubt that I think the the, the thing that NFTs have probably done really well is that generally people want to belong, right? That's like what we we're, we're tribal creatures. And over the last two years, um, for better or for worse, um, we've created a system over the COVID timeline and is to basically repel individuals. They're like, kind of like everyone's going away. So now you could buy this thing online and, and become part of this group that uses these specific memes and they talk in this way and you're part of it. Like, like you're like, I own this, I am part of this. That's why people put in their bio and then and then they're like oh i can make money off this stuff and they feel like they're creating value so that that creates something inherently in an individual and i get that i understand it i understand why it's there um but i don't think that it's the the ultimate solution i think it's the beginning of this concept of peer to peer economics and i think what we're going to unlock with our new product is a new level of peer to peer economics because what What's very unique about Zion that no application has, and we don't have a proxy for this, is that every single piece of content in the Zion protocol is an active opportunity for a payment. So think of, go to, like, just get, put this in your mind, go to Instagram right now and imagine if every reply to every photo could be an active opportunity for you to be paid by anyone in the world through a Bitcoin Lightning transaction. Imagine what that unlocks, like not liking a photo, not just giving a bullshit like, but you for your comment, maybe you post a meme as a reply can be paid for that individual piece of content. I think the unlock of that value to me is a whole other place because you can now start responding to things your favorite creator posts and you could be paid instantly in Bitcoin by anyone in the world. We're not restricting in this. So they're, you know, they're creating their, my thesis is as most of these NFT communities will move to Zion. Why? Because now they can add their wallets into the Zion application. They can verify that they're part of that DID and then they can join these communities. And now people can pay each other for things. They can post memes and be paid for it. There can be a single wallet. I think where Discord and some of these other applications failed is that they didn't build the native money to their protocols. Now there's a native money that I can embed into these communities. And we want to go after those communities, all those crypto native communities that are building their wallets or whatever, they should come to Zion because it's a, it's a, it's a native currency to chat. So when you say these NFT communities will come to Zion, you mean that they will not basically, they won't, they will no longer be NFT communities. Then they will be just, Why? they're on discord right now, right? 
Most so like when you say Discord when you say is only a, a means to an end. Um, you know, for example, the way we are building our, uh, we have our own platform. Our platform doesn't have the chat functionality, but does, but it does have where that's where we host the content. So we have you know the live sessions, and then the live sessions get recorded, and then the on-demand content stays there. So initially, when we have our own NFT drop in about six weeks, we will be having the uh, we will be using Discord as a place where our community hangs out and chats for now until we build our own. Um, and part of the reason why I'm I'm having this discussion because I want to understand whether Zion is 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 a solution here, um, and then eventually we will essentially recreate what we have on Discord. We'll recreate that on our own platform for our community. So, so my, I mean, my question to you is that so we how could are use you... Telegram, we could use anything, right? But as long course, as it's, I, it's, I, uh, it, as long as it's a place that's token gated, so that we know that people who bought our tokens, our NFTs. Because that's our community, right? So people buy this three-year membership of the community. So that we so and then there's going to be like different tiers of them. So then there will be another drop in six months' time, so that there, a new group of people will come in. But the people who were there earlier, they get additional support. They get you know because they're the Genesis holders. They're like you know the the first generation of our platform users, and then they become like almost like the influencers uh, as we build. Uh, you know the next generations and the next generation and eventually we will continue to keep expanding but we are a, an educational platform so for us it's like it just means we will get more and more people learning and and discovering these these types of you know things that we are we are teaching and and also there is uh, going to be a very big part of it is uh the marketing aspect so that people can marketing and networking and you know like all that um thought leadership so think of it almost like a web3 version of uh, linkedin you know that's that's kind of the idea it's kind of like a place where people can uh, de uh, develop their thought leadership you know but but also they are basically they instead of let's say go to linkedin and buy um, uh, annual membership of uh, Sales Navigator or, or LinkedIn Premium, instead of that, they buy a token. And then the beauty of the token is that, when I say token, I mean a non-fungible token. And then the beauty of that is that anytime they don't want it, they can sell their token. You know, so they can opt out, they can just simply sell, sell it. And because of the way that the network is growing and the demand for the platform grows over time, it could well be that it's, uh, that maybe the token that you bought, um, let's say in uh, October, maybe by January, that token may be worth more because now more people want it. That's simply just a, a demand and uh, supply kind of uh, situation. Um, so it's a very different model to what uh, what you are building on Zion, but this model seems to be creating a level of stickiness and sense of belonging and all of those things in a way that you know you're like okay i hold this nft in my wallet and because of that i opt into this um so th the platform where we use it for for chat could be anything it could be telegram it could be discord it could be our new platform we are building it could be you know kevin rose is building high rise you know like it could be anywhere um or any metaverse when you say that those communities will come to Zion, how would that translate if those communities are NFT based? I think that eventually there might be a multi-wallet support that we want to have out there if we see that the market continues to grow in a much bigger way. But I think the base layer identity for an individual is not a wallet, it's a DID. That's where I think the distinction is, is, is people say that, oh, you can use your wallet as your identifier. I don't think that's the, the way that identity should work on the new web. Um, because it's not an interoperable standard. DIDs have just been accepted from the W3C, the, basically the foundation that creates internet standards, right? Like we're talking over an internet standard. Your browser uses an internet standard, HTTPS or HTTP. Like now DIDs have been added as that identity standard. So that means everyone that builds on the internet will be like, okay, now we this should be our identity layer. Um, so I think that's where we will excel and win is we're going to start with identity and then we're going to expand from there and then maybe there's multi-wallet support i don't know I, I want to see where the market's going i just didn't think that's why i said i don't think you need a blockchain for data storage i don't think you need a token to build a community in this way um but sure i mean nfts are a thing i get it okay so you can have me as your advisor <laughs> 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 that's all yeah um 
Okay, sounds good. So, so, so you are open to seeing where the market is going and potentially adapting if if that's where um, the attention is going. Open, yes. Convince, no. Okay, cool. But you realize that even by just being open, it means you may not be invited back on Peter McCormick's podcast. <laughs> no, I'm Peter, 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 Peter and I, Peter and I are friends. I'm, I'm kidding. Peter I'm kidding. and I are friends. I'm okay. kidding. Just because of, I think he he gets a lot of. Um, Obviously, he will be under a lot of pressure if he has people on the show that are not focused on Bitcoin. Uh, I am focused on Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't it doesn't change that. Like the ability to like bring an Ether scan address doesn't mean that I'm building on Ethereum. It just means that you're putting a wallet address that has some stuff in there and you're adding it to your account. It's mm -hmm. Very it's pretty simple. Yeah. So so this model that you're building, so just so that I can visualize it better is uh, i can i can now just go on uh can i download it can i can i already use it is it something we we, we we closed it off until october when we launched the v2 but you okay. can join our wait list if you go to zion.fyi love to have you okay cool um and do i pay anything to uh to start using it to begin with so if you if you want to build your own communities on the application yeah with the, the communities that are paid for um, but if you just want to be a regular user you can just browse around and and go and join communities the communities may be gated where you need a certain number of sats in your wallet to access that community so that might be a case when you say that as a content creator you have to pay to begin with does that mean like what kind of uh, pay how much are we talking about let's say if, is it like as your community grows you pay more does it work like yeah, that? Yeah, because because we're going to be helping creators host their own decentralized web nodes because we don't believe that they have, like, there isn't a technical solution out there right now to easily host. So the same way that you would host a website with Google, um, you can host with us and we provide you a decentralized web node. So that will start at $12 a month. And as bandwidth increases, um, we will have a, some sort of a static pricing that increases as well. But if you want to host your own, you, you're more than welcome to. You're not beholden by it. That's why we're open source. We we want people to be able to host their own systems if they want to in the future. And is it is it easy enough to run your own node? Not yet, unless not you're yet. an engineer. Yeah, okay. As with so, most things, I mean, most people don't run their own Bitcoin nodes or their own Lightning nodes. Um, it, it's a challenging system and architecture right now. Yeah, there is a certain level of know-how you need to have. So it's fairly accessible, uh, you know, like if you're you're talking about like not hundreds of dollars a month to begin with, you know, as your audience grows, then you're using more bandwidth and then it, it increases. It's in a similar basically way that you would buy a a hosting solution from something like GoDaddy or something like that, right? Is it is it similar to that? Exactly the same, yeah. So the future of DNS for web applications are DIDs and decentralized web nodes. So the way that you proxy DNS on the web, um, we want to build that with applications. Do you see um, a scenario where through what you are building uh, with Zion that you may be able to solve Bitcoin's um, marketing problem? Because I ask more and more people <laughs> use it. Um, yeah, I think Bitcoin's looking for its killer application and I hope that we are that solution, obviously, um, maybe. Are you aware of other people building something similar on Bitcoin uh, in terms of social media? No, not that I know of. OK, and would you re would you um, describe what you're building as a social media or it, not really? Is, I, I think it, I think it's yeah, hard. It's, it's, it, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to call it social because it's not an open abstract network where you post something and everyone sees it. It's not an open system like that, because when you join Zion, you're joining a specific community by a specific creator. Um, so it's more like a network union. Uh, Balaji just wrote a paper called or put out a book called The Network State, yeah. and he describes this concept of a network union. And I, I think that what we are is more of a network union um, than we are a open social network because you have to go into the app and then you're going into a specific community from a specific creator. Um, the way that you chat is more like an open chat system. There's conversations that are led by the creator. Um, so it's a little bit different than uh, what we would define as traditional social media. Now, we won't be launching profiles and accounts until 2023. So it's, it doesn't have the same feelings. Um, it's more of a community network than it is a social network. I would really like to um, experience it to see um, to see how that um, how that could work. From what I'm hearing is that um, 
as a content creator, there's a lot on my shoulder to try and bring people into this network, right? So you will be relying on content creators to bring in their own network into this into this ecosystem. So you, you will go and say to everybody that I'm, I'm now going to be on Zion, you know, if you want to, uh, it's a similar kind of way like, like hey guys, I, I hang out mostly on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, follow me, you know, follow me here. So, so it's, it's a similar kind of concept, right? So that, you know, a content creator, you would hope that they would use this as their main network of bringing in their audience there. Yeah. And, and the difference from these other networks, um, we promise ownership and that they own the relationship with their fans. And, and this uh, DID is something that will be persistent outside of Zion, right? So a DID is not anchored to Zion. We just use that implementation. So what happens is when you start an account, this is kind of the technical complexity of what makes, I think, what we're doing very special is that you establish a DID inside the application to create your account. You get a private key, uh, you get a seed phrase to back up that specific private key. And then we take that DID and that and we actually anchor it through a hash to the Bitcoin blockchain. So then there's an element of your identity is now stored on Bitcoin forever, right? And if you think about what Bitcoin really is, it's a time chain more than a blockchain. Um, additionally, it's actually a place where you can store private keys. That's where, like, it's a system that stores keys forever in perpetuity. It's the place that actually stores identity in perpetuity now. This is the second now application for Bitcoin. So that's what's really cool is that creator now has this identity that can go build communities. And eventually, other applications will use DIDs. We're just one of the first. When other applications implement that, you don't have to go start a whole new account. You're like, oh, this is my DID. I link it to this new application. And now everyone knows in that application that this is the new creator. This is the same creator that was on Zion is now here. It's the same person because they have the same private key and they just signed with that message. So we know it's the same person. So the, the interesting thing about how we're building this app is that we have persistent identity over space and time. Um, and it's also cross-platform in the sense of there'll be interoperability across other applications in the future. And I think this was the original promise of the web. And, and I'm really excited that we're kind of pioneering um, how this will all work. What made you want to do this? I, I was bored. <laughs> okay. I was bored. Um, you know, I, I'm a very creative person. I sold my company. Um, I had basically retired. I didn't like, I had enough money to live off interest for the rest of my life. And so I was like, you know what? I was bored. I, after going through that, like really intense brain thing, I was like, man, I'm 31. Am I really going to stop now? So I went and I just tried to solve a really hard problem. I was like, how do people communicate on the web? How do influencers own their audience? So I went to solve a very big problem. I wanted to solve because I'm bored. I got like, I have a lot of energy. I have, I have a lot of time and I have a lot of energy. So I wanted to just solve a, a really challenging problem. So I was like, let me go figure this out. I got introduced to Bitcoin, Lightning. I went down this rabbit hole. And then a year and a half later, tons of capital, tons of investors, tons of partners wrote a book. And here we are now. Nice. Very nice. Trying to think about how does the current market state affect um affect you and and how how has it um how has it impacted your decisions and the, what you're building so for example you mean we have the, seen... the collapse the collapse of coinery like how well, like collapse? everything has <laughs> collapsed together right <laughs> i don't I don't, <laughs> I don't think so i think bitcoin's stronger than ever i think the price is down a little bit but i think the network is stronger than ever look i think it just confirms our narrative right that mm -hmm. you don't need a token you don't need to speculate a Ponzi scheme. You don't need to do any of these things to build something. It's affected me absolutely zero. And I think about it absolutely zero. I'm making more money than ever. So I don't like it to me, it makes no difference. Um, I think it's nice in the sense that it's, it's taking out the trash, right? There's a lot of people in this industry, like crypto in, in general, and there's a lot of grifters. So I'm happy that all those people like that were buying their fancy cars and their fancy houses are now asking their mothers for money because they deserve it <laughs> okay um so going back to this uh idea of uh, when you say that uh, you are giving people that ownership of their um relationship with their with their fans essentially um how does moderation work uh, on zion self-moderated by the creators themselves we we do not handle moderation because we have no business to do such the creators it's their communities they own them 
they own the relationship with their fans and they are in charge to moderate the communities themselves. We, we don't want to do any of that. That's their business. It's their communities, their house you're entering into. It's their technical state. Um, so moderation is handled by the community admins and that is it. And is there going to be any kind of limitation of, um, you know, the type of communities that can, uh, that can create content there or? Um, what do you mean by there's like, legality? For example, the, the for fact, the fact, the fact that I live in the United States, I have to follow the laws of this great country. Um, so I will follow what is under the purview of the law. But other than that, I like my like the the, the wokeness it will not exist, right? Like there's no there's no like oh this is not polite. Go yourself, right? Like what's polite? Like facts don't give a about your feelings. Like I don't I don't give a like this wokeism will not exist. Um, if you're feeling bad about certain things, sorry about that. This is not the place for you. Um, this is not like a kind of, <laughs> I, I think that that words or, or violence is not actually true. Uh, so yeah. those kinds of things. But if it's illegal, it's illegal. I don't, I'm, illegal is illegal. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so look, it, it, it all sounds super interesting. I want to try it. Um, and, you know, I would like to be able to also introduce it to our community, you know, so that, people can go and try it. I, I see a world where we're going to have both. I think we are going to have both, you know, the kind of people who are going to be primarily using Bitcoin and, uh, you know, what you are, what you're building. I know that a lot of people believe that all this NFT thing is going to go away. I, I very much doubt it because um, as somebody who has been pretty involved in it, I think it's, there's something about um, the marketing, uh, marketability of it uh, that I, I doubt that is going to go away. So I, I see a world where there will be both, I think. Um, the markets will decide. Yeah, the markets the beautiful will decide. The beautiful thing is we, 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 we live in a beautiful capitalist system that I appreciate capitalism so much. Yeah. Um, but the markets will decide ultimately. Yeah, like we're that's not, why we're, I'm going to... We, we we can predict all we want, but the markets are what make things a reality. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Super interesting. I will be very much, uh, you know, looking forward to the new launch and, you know, figuring out where things are going. And it would be good maybe at some point to have you on our platform, not necessarily on a podcast. But so on our platform, we have got a, this a thing where we bring in founders um, of um, people who are building interesting things in that Web3 space um, to actually share their screen, show us what they're building. You know, maybe maybe somebody from your team could come in and do it to kind of give people a walkthrough and, and explain how it can be used. And, you know, it's another way of reaching an audience other than a podcast so that it's more visual and, and more. And then people, there will be a live audience. They will be asking you questions. There can be up to a thousand people um, live in the conferencing and uh q a on all that stuff so. those are those are fun i i've done i've done a lot of like live video stuff and i really enjoy that because people have like real time and i get into it a little bit so i get very as you can see i'm quite animated and i'm very opinionated on things and when people ask questions in real time i can react and, and feel what i'm doing i like those a lot i yeah. I, I enjoy doing those things good yeah one it's one of the things that makes our platform really exciting is that you can have that, uh, you know, connection and people, you know, and people register in advance. They, they just come in and, you know, you've got the stage to yourself and and people will ask you questions. And it's like it's so lively as you are talking. People will be sending a lot of emojis. They will be sending a lot of questions. It's like you can't keep up. There are so many questions. There will be like the chat, the questions. So it's very, very interactive. And I think it's a great way of building community. Um, we are hoping to be able to over time to increase that because right now we have a limitation of we can have up to a thousand people at a time, but eventually, hopefully we'll be able to increase that as well. Cool. Yeah. So we will be, I'll be in touch with you. Uh, how can I, how can people follow what you're doing? How can I make sure so I can go and become, uh, join the waiting list? Yeah. Go to zion.fyi, put your email in. We'll send you a message when we're ready. Um, how do you find me? Uh, just my name. Justin yeah. Rizvani, I'm on everything. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, I will, I'm uh, just to say this, I am verified on every social channel. I will never text you about some trades or how your trades are going and all the, there's a new fake account in every day opening yeah, up. When you, when, you run a, when you run a Bitcoin company, people try to scam other people. So I will never DM you asking about anything. So, but you can find me across all social media. Awesome, all right. Thank you so much, Justin. I really appreciated your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.
I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Justin Rezvani. Be sure to check out Zion and keep an eye out for his developments. Whether you agree or disagree with his views on Web3 and the rest of the crypto space, you have to give him credit for his knowledge and understanding of Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to it on Apple, Spotify, or any other one of your favorite podcast channels. And don't forget to give it a five-star rating and write a review. The full interviews are also available on my YouTube channel, The Somi Ariane Show.